Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna go over all of the very best radar detectors available on the market here in 2024. And because like anything else, every detector is gonna have some pros and cons, uh, we're gonna go over the key things that you need to know about for all the different detectors at different price points and ultimately help you decide which detector is best for you. Now, before we get started, if you're new to radar detectors, definitely stop and check out my video on Radar Detectors 101. Uh, that's gonna go over the key basics that you're gonna wanna know about, uh, some of the key features between different detectors so that you know kind of like what features are important to you, as well as explain some of the terminology that we're gonna be covering in this video as well. Additionally, I've also done another video recently that goes over all the key detectors currently available, both good and bad, and that video will give you a good idea as far as the overall radar detector landscape. In this video, though, we're gonna narrow things down to just the very best options at different price points uh, and go into a little bit more detail about the pros and cons of each option. And you're gonna see some options from a variety of different manufacturers. To give you a quick high-level overview of uh, the different brands, unit and brand detectors tend to offer really good performance and have a really nice bang for the buck. That said, they can false a little bit more than the competition and they can be a little bit trickier to get updated. Then you've got Escort brand detectors, which tend to be easier to use. They're typically easier to keep updated and will usually have fewer false alerts than the Unidens. That said, the false alert filtering can sometimes come at the expense of performance. Then from Valentine, you've got the V1 Gen 2. This detector's got nice long range performance, though it's lacking in some of the features built into other detectors. However, you can add a lot of those features back in using a variety of different apps. And so as you can see, each manufacturer approaches things a little bit differently. Plus, of course, each detector is gonna have its own specialties and its own advantages and disadvantages, right? Uh, it doesn't seem like there's one detector that's universally the best for every person in every driving situation. It really is gonna depend upon your specific needs. And so in this video, we're gonna go over a lot of those details here to figure out which one is gonna be best. Now, as always, this is not a paid or sponsored review. Uh, I've done many videos in the past comparing a lot of these detectors, but because things keep changing, uh, a lot of these detectors have actually had updates to uh, improve the detectors to fix bugs. Uh, there's been new apps that have come out since the last time I've done a comparison like this. We're gonna go ahead and take an updated look here as far as how all these detectors compare. And then after watching this video, if you find that there's a detector that you'd like to purchase, you can use an affiliate link down in the video description and using those links does support my channel at no cost to you. And it allows me to continue doing uh, videos and comparisons like this here for you. Uh, additionally down there, you'll also find links to my setup guide so that after you purchase the detector, uh, it'll go over all the different settings and options as well as give some recommended settings as far as uh, how to optimize the detector for the best level of performance and false alert filtering. And so with all that said now, let's go ahead and dive in and start taking a look at the best radar detectors available at different price points. Now to start off, we're gonna begin with our inexpensive entry level detectors. Now most of these I would actually recommend that you don't purchase for two key reasons. Number one, they're gonna offer really poor performance, meaning they don't do a good job of alerting to police radar in the first place. And number two, they're gonna be giving you a lot of false alerts to the point where you're not gonna trust the detector when it goes off and it's gonna be annoying when it's falsing all the time. That said, under $200 or so, there's two detectors that I'd recommend you take a look at. Number one is the Uniden DFR7 and number two is the Redenso XP. Both of these detectors are gonna offer a reasonable level of performance and a reasonable level of false alert filtering, uh, plus some nice GPS-based features to keep the detector quieter around town and to help uh, alert to things like red light cameras and speed cameras. And between these two detectors, we find that the unit and option tends to have longer range and better performance, while the Redenso XP has some additional features. For example, the XP can do things like vary its sensitivity uh, based on speed, though it's not a super sensitive detector in the first place. It's got a three digit frequency display instead of just two digit, though the frequency display itself is wildly inaccurate. Plus it's got some features like KA band segmentation or separate uh, blind spot filtering versus TSR filters. That said, I don't find any of these features to be that big of a deal in practice. And so if you were to twist my arm, I'd maybe pick the unit inversion just to get a little bit better performance. But realistically, at the end of the day, I'd probably just go online and buy whichever one is cheaper. <laughs> now, both of these detectors are pretty mature at this point. They were originally released back in 2016. And so while both detectors continue to receive updates for their GPS red light camera and speed camera database, uh, we're not seeing any additional firmware updates to add any new features or anything. Now, since these detectors were released, of course we had some new options come out that do have some additional modern features. For example, you've got things like the Cobra RAD 480i, uh, which adds Bluetooth support and app integration. However, the 480i fails in the two key things that I look for. Number one, uh, the performance is pretty abysmal in testing. And number two, it seems to give quite a few false alerts both on K-band and more critically on KA-band. And so for that reason, under around $200 or so, the only detectors that I've seen that meet my two criteria are the Uniden DFR7 
and Redenso XP. Which one you get is a bit of a toss up. I think both of them are kind of meh, but that's sort of what you expect uh, when you're looking at sort of the simpler, basic, more inexpensive detectors. For my money though, I think the best place to start off is actually moving up to the next tier uh, under $300 where you're looking at detectors like the Uniden R3 and the Cobra Rad 700i. Now the Uniden R3 is the gold standard for detectors under $300. Now the R3 has been very popular ever since it was launched. It's got really nice long detection range, much better than the DFR series detectors. It's got a lot of the key GPS based features that you'll want and it adds photo radar detection. And if you're looking for a high performance detector at an affordable price point, the R3 tends to be the detector to get. Now that said, there's another detector that's come out recently that has some improvements over the R3 and costs $50 less. Uh, it's the Cobra Rad 700i. And while it needs some additional testing and further updates before I could fully recommend it, I do think it's worth an honorable mention. And the reason I say that is it's got better blind spot filtering than the Uniden does. It adds automatic GPS lockouts instead of manual, meaning as you drive around with the detector, it can automatically learn where the false alerts are located in your area and begin filtering them out for you. And it adds Bluetooth support to integrate with your phone and add some additional functionality. For example, it can go out to the cloud to reference a speed limit of the road that you're on and display that right on the face of the detector. And it can give you cloud alerts shared in real time with other drivers. Now, the reason I can't fully recommend it yet though is the fact that we're still seeing some bugs here at launch that need to be ironed out with the future firmware update. For example, the display itself is pretty dim and pretty difficult to see uh, when you're driving around in the sun. It gives quite a few false alerts on KA band, which is something I never like to see. Uh, and some of the features that it adds, like the multi-radar detection for the photo radar detection, uh, can't yet be turned off. And so if you don't have photo radar in your area, you can't actually turn the feature off to, well, avoid some of the false alerts that you may see with the feature turned on. But either way, despite this being a detector from Cobra, which is traditionally known for making pretty low end junky detectors, this one actually seems to hold a lot of promise and we'll have to see how it goes over time as they continue to improve the detector. Then next, moving on to some of the highest end radar detectors that don't yet add uh, directional arrows. Uh, we've got detectors like the Whistler Titan, which is gonna give you the longest warranty. You've got the Redenso DS1 with its trick mounting options. You've got the Uniden R4, which is gonna be the best performer here of the bunch. Uh, and then you've got the Escort Max 3, which has Escort's cloud integration. And between these different options, in my opinion, the very best one is gonna be the Uniden R4. It's essentially an upgraded version of the R3 that gives even longer range performance, uh, improved false alert filtering. It's gonna add auto lockouts instead of just manual lockouts. Uh, it's got Bluetooth integration. And so now you've got some great apps available for both Android and from iOS from a variety of different third-party developers. And so if you're needing a really high performance detector, while all these options are actually pretty good, uh, the R4 is gonna be the best of the bunch. That said, of course, it's got some downsides as well. For example, Uniden's implementation of automatic GPS lockout still needs work for it to be able to uh, reliably and consistently automatically lock out your stationary false alerts. When it comes to photo radar detection, while it's improved over the R3, we find that with certain photo radar systems like the Gatso based systems, it's still ineffective against certain ones of those, depending on where you are in the country. Uniden's firmware updates can sometimes be tough for people where you could plug in a detector and your computer may have difficulty actually seeing the detector and getting it updated. Luckily, there is a really good resource that I can link to down in the description that's gonna help you avoid uh, any of those issues in case you encounter them yourself. Plus some of the accessories that Uniden has promised, uh, such as their wired control pad or their uh, optional laser jammers, uh, who knows when that's actually gonna be released and made available to us. Now, throughout most of 2023, the detector was available online for about $300, which is the same price as the R3, which was honestly kind of a ridiculous deal and made it an easy no-brainer at that price. Now that said, since then, the price has gone back up to 379 uh, MSRP. And you can of course check the current pricing using the links down in the description. But regardless, even at 379, I think this is gonna be the best high-performance non-aero radar detector that you can buy, considering all of the different options that are out there. Next, stepping it up, we're gonna move on and take a look at detectors that do have directional arrows. Now, Valentine is the company that pioneered radar detectors with arrows with the introduction of the Valentine 1, but their patent on arrows expired years ago, and so now we have many different manufacturers who sell detectors that also have arrows. Now, starting off with your entry-level detectors with arrows, uh, you've got options like the Cobra Dual Pro 360, uh, the Uniden R7, the Escort Max 360, and the Max 360 Mark II. And between these different options, my pick is again going to be another unit of detector, the R7, particularly when you pair it with the uh, custom third-party firmware from Mithiru. Now, while the Cobra and Escort detectors do have some additional options, such as Bluetooth capabilities to integrate with your phone, and they may offer some other advantages, like the Cobra detector can sometimes be found cheaper than the Uniden, uh, and the Escort detectors natively have fewer false alerts than the Unidens do, 
The sweet spot that I find is gonna be to pick up the R7, which is gonna have better performance uh, than any of these other detectors, improved responsiveness than any of the other detectors, and to help deal with some of the additional false alerts, you can pick up the custom third-party firmware online, uh, load it into the R7, and it's gonna add some additional features and filtering capabilities to help keep the detector extra quiet for you. And again, I'm not sponsored by Uniden or any of these other manufacturers for that matter, uh, but if you take a look across the board as far as the best balance when it comes to performance, uh, features, and false alert filtering, I think that the R7 with the custom firmware loaded in is gonna be the best all-around pick. And then lastly, we're gonna take a look at the high-end radar detectors that have arrows, uh, namely the Valentine 1 Gen 2, the Uniden R8, and the Escort Redline 360C. Now, starting off, we'll begin first with the Valentine 1 Gen 2. Now, this is a detector that's very popular among enthusiasts. It's got outstanding long-range performance. It's easily one of the best performing detectors on the market. Uh, when it comes to responsiveness, it is excellent, fantastic against uh, K-band guns, though it does seem to struggle uh, against a number of different K-band guns, particularly some of the lower-powered options. Being a Valentine detector, it's got your directional arrows, of course. And like the Redline 360C, it's also undetectable by radar detector detectors, though most people here in the United States uh, don't actually need that feature. Now, the V1 is gonna be more affordable than some of the highest end detectors, in part because it actually lacks some features that those detectors have. For example, the detector doesn't have photo radar detection built in. Uh, additionally, there's no GPS built into the detector as well. So if you want something like low speed muting to keep the detector quiet around town, uh, well, Valentine sells an accessory that can plug into your vehicle's OBD2 port and keep the detector quiet for you at lower speeds. Now, a better option that's free, and honestly, I think a little bit better, is to actually use an app on your phone and use your phone's GPS to keep the detector muted for you instead. Additionally, using your phone and a third party app, you can add back in that GPS lockout functionality too. So as you're driving around and you pass automatic door openers or speed signs in the side of the road, the apps can keep track of where all those false alerts are located and then mute your detector for you every time you come by. As a bonus, the algorithm that's being used for the GPS lockouts actually work better on the different phone apps than they do uh, built into any of the different radar detectors. And all the stuff that you can add with the apps I think is actually a big reason why the detector is so popular among radar detector enthusiasts. Uh, the big app that you're gonna hear about, of course, is JBV1. It's an Android-only app uh, that adds some pretty awesome functionality to your detector. Uh, in fact, I even run it in my car uh, in standalone mode to add in a lot of those features, even if I'm running a totally different brand of detector altogether. And JBV1, whether you're pairing it with the V1 or running it in standalone mode, can do things like giving you alerts to uh, other police who've been spotted and reported in the area. Think of it like Waze, but on steroids. It can alert you to police aircraft overhead, uh, something that your radar detector or laser jammer can't actually help you with. It can give you color-coded heat maps to give you a better idea of where police like to set up for speed traps. Uh, very helpful if they haven't yet been marked in something like Waze. Uh, it can give you real-time weather information or speed limit information. I mean, Google Maps can give you speed limit information, but this can also let you know of like, hey, the speed limit is about to drop up ahead. So there's a lot of really cool functionality that's built in here. Now, there are other apps that are available like Highway Radar on Android. Uh, there's Highway Radar being beta tested on iOS. There's a V1 Companion available on iOS and V1 Driver. Like there's a variety of different apps that are available, but JVV1 seems to be uh, kind of the best one that has the best implementation of a lot of these features and uh, the most features available. And so it's a very popular option. Plus to top it off, it's free. I'm a big fan of the app. And so regardless of what detector you run, it's a very popular option. Now you can of course pair it with the V1. I mean, JB V1, it's in the name. Though I've actually been noticing that most of the functionality like the crowdsourced information and speed limit info and aircraft stuff can actually be run uh, standalone regardless of if you're using it with the V1. Now, if you choose to integrate the app with a detector, it is gonna add some additional features that are V1 specific. For example, if you have the automatic profile overrides option enabled, that can actually have the detector or the app rather kind of change its settings based on where you drive. Well, you can also have it change the detector settings based on where you drive. So if you drive into different states where police use different radar guns, it can actually turn the different settings on and off as needed based on what police use in different areas. When it comes to logging your alerts while you drive, well, pretty much all the different apps can log the alerts, but I actually prefer the uh, press presentation and kind of searchability afterwards of JBV1 compared to some of the other apps too. You can also set up the app to change the detector sensitivity and filtering options based on speed so you get maybe more aggressive filtering when you're driving around town, uh, but then open things up when you're driving on the highway, for example. So there are some features that are available uh, just with the uh, V1 integration. Again, a lot of these features can be done with different apps, like on iOS, you can have it change the detector sensitivity and stuff based on speed. You can do alert logging, you can do a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, but yes, some of the options are just gonna be for like JBV1, like having it change the settings based on where you drive. Either way though, I do think that an app is very helpful for the V1 to give you not only like your GPS based features, but also do things like let you know the frequency of different signals that you're seeing. Uh, the V1's display does not 
display the frequency of different alerts. Unlike other detectors that do display that right on the face of the detector, it is an advanced feature, but I do think that it's one worth taking advantage of. And I've got another video that explains uh, the benefits of knowing the frequency of different radar signals. Uh, but either way, yes, there's a lot of stuff that you can add in using the phone here uh, with the V1. That said, as an overall package, I tend to prefer the other two detectors in general, uh, particularly as my daily drivers. It's gonna be the uh, Uniden R8 and the Escort Redline 360C. And the reason I prefer these detectors is they've got some nice advantages over the V1 Gen 2. For example, they've got a frequency display right on the face of the detector itself, of course. Uh, they've got GPS built in, so you're not dependent on the phone for a lot of the core critical functionality. If you like JBV1, again, awesome app. You can, of course, run it in standalone mode and run it alongside any detector that you want. Those detectors also have photo radar detection. Uh, they help you avoid some of the issues that you may have with the V1 Gen 2. Like uh, this year, they've actually been addressing some of the uh, false alerts on KA band, uh, but the V1 still can sometimes junk out legitimate police radar signals. It doesn't seem to happen frequently, but it is an issue that we've been seeing here with the V1 Gen 2. Uh, and a lot of this stuff can actually be addressed by running something like a uh, Redline 360C or an R8. Those detectors have their own pros and cons, of course, but let's take a closer look at those. Now, starting off first with the R8, it retails for $100 more than the V1 Gen 2, though you can sometimes find it available online on sale. Again, check the links down in the description. And one of the key things that I like about the R8 is it's really gonna be prioritizing performance, meaning it's gonna give you really long range performance, again, being a high-end detector, uh, longer range than what we've got with like the R7, for example, and it's gonna be giving you really quick responsiveness against both KA band guns and uh, against K band guns. It's got photo radar detection if you need it, and it's got GPS built in, of course, so you've got your low speed muting built in, uh, your auto lockouts, your red light camera and speed camera stuff, all that is built directly into the detector. Like the R4 though, it does have some issues with certain Gatso photo radar guns, uh, and the auto lockouts still need work. That said, with the auto lockout specifically, you can actually use different apps for both Android and for iOS to help uh, actually improve the auto lockouts. Uh, and again, make it better than what you've got built into the detector. Plus using the apps, you can also have the phone improve the detector's blind spot filtering capabilities. Uh, you can get your alert logging features, et cetera. The detector is gonna be chattier out of the box and that's gonna be one of the trade-offs that you're gonna have if you're really prioritizing performance and alerting to signals over maybe staying quiet to other signals. And so for that reason, if you wanna help quiet it down, uh, I like R8 Companion as the app for iOS or Highway Radar uh, if you're running Android. Highway Radar is a free app while R8 Companion is a paid app. And I'll drop links to both apps down below as well. Now, on the other hand, if you want a long range detector that really prioritizes quietness and kind of more ease of use, uh, in that case, I'd actually recommend my other daily driver, which is the Escort Redline 360C. Now, the Redline 360C is also gonna be a long range detector like the V1 Gen 2 uh, or the Uniden R8. It's gonna outperform Escort's Max series detectors like the Max 360 Mark II or the Max 360C Mark II. And so this is gonna be the highest end, longest range Escort detector. Now going with the Escort, the real advantage here, I guess two main things, number one, the false alert filtering, it's gonna be the quietest option uh, among the Valentine, Uniden, and Escort options. So if you really want a quiet detector, you can just kind of like put it in the windshield, maybe set it and forget it, right? Get some of your initial settings and Wi-Fi stuff dialed in, which we'll get to here in just a moment throw it on the windshield, it's gonna be kind of like your easiest to use detector. Now, the downside here, as far as having a quieter detector, is this can come at the expense of performance, namely responsiveness to quick and brief signals. Uh, this was actually a really big issue earlier to the point where I actually stopped recommending the detector altogether because the responsiveness was so bad. Now, since then, Escort has released uh, an update or two and that has improved the detector. It's made it faster at alerting to some of those brief signals. That said, it is gonna still be slower even after the updates uh, than the V1 Gen 2 and the unit in R8, and this is gonna apply both to K-band and to KA-band. And so for that reason, if you face a lot of like instant on or quick trigger, I'd say maybe go for the V1 or the R8, but if you've got mostly constant on or easier instant on in your area, for most people, I think you're still gonna be able to get by here uh, with this detector. Now, when it comes to photo radar detection, it offers it just like the unit in detectors, though it's not gonna give you any directional arrows. I would of course love to see the arrows work for photo radar on the red line, but that said, due to the uh, lower power nature of photo radar, you're definitely gonna to wanna to take action very quickly here. And so the arrows may be less useful or less needed, I would say, compared to uh, maybe your traditional, like really high powered <laughs> police radar. But nevertheless, it would be nice to have that feature working just like we have with the uh, other detectors. And then another one of the red lines, maybe biggest advantages is the uh, Bluetooth and especially the Wi-Fi integration. Now, Escort has some apps available that can integrate with the detector over Bluetooth to make it easier to change settings, uh, share alerts in real time with other drivers or display the speed limit of the current road that you're on right on the face of the detector. And then to top it all off, Escort's Drive Smarter app is now the first and only radar detector app 
that has the ability to integrate with Apple CarPlay and display all the radar detector's information right on your vehicle's heads-up display. That said, I'm not a huge fan of the app. It doesn't always reconnect reliably every time you get back in the car. And again, with the Escort, I really like the option of just getting the car and driving and not having to mess around with the apps and whatnot. And so for that reason, if you've got Wi-Fi built into your car, uh, or even let's say maybe Wi-Fi at your house or something, uh, you can actually have the detector connect to the uh, Wi-Fi that you have available. Now that's gonna offer a couple of advantages here. Number one, if you've got it in your car, that's gonna give you all of the speed limit information and the uh, cloud alert shared with other drivers uh, as you drive around without being dependent on the phone. It does a much better job of automatically reconnecting every time you get in the car. Now, to be fair, you're not gonna get a ton of cloud alerts compared to something like Waze. There's way more people that use Waze, and so there's, well, a lot more alerts there. It's gonna be a lot more useful than something like the cloud alerts through the Escort apps. But uh, you are gonna get the speed limit displayed on the face of the detector, and there's another really cool option that I like, uh, which are the automatic updates for the firmware updates and for the red light camera and speed camera database. You see, every time you start up your car, it's gonna automatically check for any updates, and if there's updates available, it'll let you know, prompt you, and give you the ability to go ahead and update while you drive. Now, you can, of course, at any time, take the detector, bring it home, and plug it into the computer to update that way, but just being able to get notified of updates while you're driving and then just update directly in the car like this is definitely convenient, which then comes back to the whole idea of just having a detector that's pretty set it and forget it and kind of does a lot of the stuff for you. It's gonna be more automated than what you'll have with some of the other detectors. And so for that reason, if I'm just getting in the car and I'm driving around, taking my kids to school, running errands and whatnot, and I don't wanna mess around with my countermeasures too much, the red line is the one that I picked. I just toss it on the windshield, don't have to mess with it, and it just does its thing for me. On the other hand, if I'm really prioritizing performance, and I'm okay with maybe making sure the app is running in the background or something, the R8 will be the one to go for. The V1 Gen 2, I a lot of times like for road trips, though if I'm running JBV1 in standalone mode, I can actually just run like an R8 or something uh, and get better performance and responsiveness that I can get with the V1 Gen 2. And so I have typically been liking maybe the V1 as my road trip detector, but I've actually been more and more uh, been finding myself gravitating to the R8 instead just due to some of the uh, performance gains that I see uh, with that detector. And then finally, one option that I wanted to mention is the uh, Escort MaxCam 360C. It's also going to offer good long-range performance, though not quite as good as the Redline because it's actually more of like a Max 360C Mark II, and it also doesn't have the RDD immunity, and so it is going to be detectable by radar detector detectors, though again, most people aren't going to need that feature. But either way, the reason to choose a detector like this is because it's actually got a dash cam built in as well. And so if you're if you're looking for a high performance radar detector that also has the convenience of a dash cam, again, one device, one mount, one power cable, you don't need a second unit uh, to run alongside your radar detector, uh, well, the MaxCam 360C is going to be the option for that. Now that said, the dash cam itself is pretty simplistic and the video quality is okay at best. Uh, a standalone dash cam is definitely going to give you better video quality and a much richer feature set. But if you're looking for something really convenient, whether it's for maybe like traveling and rental cars, just one thing to pop on the windshield, or even just for yourself uh, to have fewer things on the windshield and an easier install, the Max Cam is gonna be the best option for a uh, radar detector that has a dash cam built in too. And so with all that said, that's a look at the very best radar detectors available uh, at different price points and with different feature sets. Down in the description, you're gonna find links to where you can purchase any of the detectors, along with links to my setup guides to get the detectors set up and programmed to optimize the performance and the false alert filtering for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comment area. And other than that, yeah, that's it for now. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're doing great, and I'll see you in the next video.